Uh, my name is Howard Long and uh, I'd like to show you the progress we're making on the uh, Funky Dongle. Um, if I zoom in a little bit, you will see uh, this is the, the only one in existence, <laughs> the one that I've uh, built this week. And uh, it's, uh, as you can see, it's come on quite a little bit since the breadboarding stage. Um, if you have a look on my uh, YouTube channel, you'll see uh, the breadboarding stage that was uh, around about uh, four, four, three or four weeks ago, something like that. And we've actually managed to uh, put the, the item into a, a USB uh, key or USB dongle package here. And uh, as you can see, there's a, there's a USB uh, plug on one side, and there's um, an SMA uh, jack on, on the other side. So if I show you this, this is the, uh, the SMA just here. So you can plug your aerial in there, and uh, there's a USB, of course, that you can plug into your computer. And uh, to give you a sort of size comparison there, the, there's a 5 pence coin which is very similar in size to a US dime. So it gives you uh, an idea of the size of this unit. So uh, pretty much uh, around about uh, the same size as you might get a TV dongle for. A little bit bigger than your average memory stick, but uh, uh, this is, uh, this is the, the progress that we've made so far. And uh, I'm just uh, going to show you what's inside it. Okay, so I've uh, taken the top off, and uh, you'll see here uh, the the electronics inside it. For those of you who are interested, I'll just zoom in there, and hopefully won't get too out of focus. Um, although I am prone to do so. On the left there, uh, this is a, a microcontroller. Uh, it's a PIC. Uh, I've actually managed to get the code. It was originally a PIC32. I managed to get it to a PIC24F device. And uh, you'll also notice that rather than using QFPs, I've pretty much gone to the QFN leadless packages. Um, this is largely just so we can fix it, fit it inside the, the small USB dongle case. Uh, you'll also see in the middle there the large chip. That's the codec. This is the same codec that I've been using throughout. This is a text instruments codec. Um, it, uh, it's stereo, so this does the... Uh, a to D conversion. Uh, it's a stereo input differential which comes from the next chip on the right uh, that is the um, silicon tuner and the silicon tuner device connects to the SMA uh, as you can see just there and you see a few of the other little chips there uh, there are a number of voltage regulators on here uh, they're in SOT23 packages and there's a small level converter there uh, as well uh, which is the other chip um, one of the things I'm going to see if we can do is um, uh, see if we can maintain performance but also reduce the uh, number of uh, voltage regulators in here. I've used low noise voltage regulators throughout uh, uh, in order to be able to keep, uh, keep noise down and keep the performance of this unit uh, up to spec. And of course we all like to see what's on the other side of the board so I've taken it out of the, uh, the case here completely and uh, if I don't zoom in too quickly uh, you'll see this is the reverse side of the board there are almost no components on the reverse side of the board. There's the crystal here. Uh, it's pretty much because I couldn't find enough space on the other side of the board. And uh, also you'll see here there's a debug header that I'm using. Um, and the reason for that is that we're still in development mode, of course. So this allows me to put my uh, in-circuit emulator on and we can uh, debug the code and so on and so forth. And uh, you'll see here there's some pads. Um, by the USB plug. This is so that if instead of uh, the dongle being a plug-in dongle we just want to put it on the end of a, a, a fixed lead uh, we can do that too. We just have to solder the pads uh, to those. Uh, so solder the cable to the pads and uh, we don't need the, uh, the plug. Um, so there's, uh, that's pretty much it. But one of the, another reason to keep all the components, the two ways to keep the components all on one side if possibly can uh, one is so that uh, I can use a, just a dual-sided uh, board and try to keep a copper, um, a copper ground plane across the bottom of the uh, PCB as much as possible, which uh, I think I've been about 97% or so successful in, in keeping a, uh, a solid ground plane, particularly around the uh, silicon tuner and the codec. Um, so uh, that's, uh, that's been quite successful. And... Uh, Hopefully we'll see that the performance of this, uh, of this unit has been maintained and uh, as you can see there, there's the, uh, there's the back side of the, uh, the dongle uh, and uh, also see here this is, the, this is the front side with a nice little logo there for FunQ. Uh, but of course we could not only for, this is not only for FunQ, this will cover a, a wide spectrum as I mentioned in the introduction there from 64 megahertz up to 1.7 gigahertz. 
Okay, and uh, now I guess uh, we want to see it in action. Okay, so here's the dongle, uh, put it back in its case now, and uh, what I'm going to show you now is uh, how it works. So if I zoom out and we have a look at the computer screen here, we'll see here that I've got uh, Windows is a device manager, I'm sure, depending on if you're running Linux or Mac OS, then uh, you'll have a similar thing, but uh, I want to show you some things here that when I insert this uh, the dongle into the uh, into the computer, which I'm uh, going to do so now, I can keep the camera steady, uh, you'll see that there'll be a new, uh, so here we go, here's the uh, the dongle that I'm just about to plug in and uh, I will just shove through it in like that and uh, you can hear a little, little bit there and uh, then what will happen is, is you'll see that there's now a USB audio device if I, uh, if I unplug it that USB audio device will disappear okay and I'll uh, pop it in again So you can see it, and there you go. So it's uh, it really is plug and play. This uses the default audio drivers in the operating system, so there's no need to install any new drivers. In addition to that, you'll see up here there is also a a, a human interface device. Now this is a little bit of a uh, a way of being able to control the frequency of the dongle, and uh, again this allows us to be able to do so. Uh, without having to install any drivers. So uh, although human interface devices originally designed things like keyboards and mice, we can also use them in order to be able to uh, program the, uh, the, the dongle in, uh, frequency. So there are two uh, USB devices uh, on this single, single dongle which will appear in your device manager. Okay, and if you uh, don't believe that that was uh, actually the dongle doing that, I'll just pull it out now. And you'll see on the left hand side the screen will change because it's noticed that I've, I've pulled the dongle out. Okay, and similarly if I plug it in like this. The USB dongle will, uh, will be seen. So what I'm going to do now is, uh, like I did in the previous demo, is show you SpectreView, uh, which is a program from Mo Wheatley, which is used quite extensively uh, with sound card software, but also maybe you've used it with the uh, SDR IQ or uh, SDR 14. Now, uh, first thing I have to do is to make sure that uh, we're using the correct sound card. So I have to. I'll zoom in a little bit on the the video here. So what I'm going to do now is to uh, just check that uh, it's got it, and it has. And you can see here there's the Funcube dongle. I'm just going to zoom in, and you'll see that. There we go. So this is the Funcube dongle, you see it's a very early release, <laughs> this is hot off the press, and uh, it's set up for uh, IQ, uh, so that uh, it's quadrature, so that we can uh, uh, we can deal with uh, image rejection uh, issues. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is uh, OK that, and what we'll do is we'll start running the, the program. Okay, so what you can hear right now is a little bit of, uh, we're on the upper sideband right now, and what I'm going to do now is uh, uh, put a, um, a tone in from my uh, trusty signal generator, much like I did last time. And uh, for that, we need a, an adapter. So I've got a, an SMA to BNC adapter here, which I'm just going to plug in. Right, you can't see what I'm doing now, can you? So hopefully, you'll see now that. I'll move that over here, and I plug that in. This is my signal generator, trusty signal generator. I'm just going to plug that in here. Okay, you see there's, there's a peak has appeared just here. I'm just going to move the. There you go. So we can uh, we can now see that peak coming from the uh, signal generator. And if I switch the signal generator off. There you go, it goes, and I'm going to switch it on again. You'll hear it coming back again. Okay, so uh, that's uh, pretty neat. Next thing I want to show you is uh, maybe let's see if we can demodulate uh, some uh, single sideband uh, uh, audio traffic. But uh, before I do that, um, just a little mention of what frequency we're on here. Uh, we're actually on 433.150 right now. It's a test frequency I'm on. Happens to be the frequency of my local repeater. 
and uh, so th I've been doing some testing on that. So uh, the, the original uh, uh, breadboarded dongle was on 145, we're now on 433, uh, so testing it on 70 stems as well. Okay, so I'm going to switch off the signal generator, and I'm now going to get out my uh, trusty FT817 again, and hopefully it will be a bell on frequency. Uh, I'm going to do this on sideband, so... Okay, a little bit off. Hello, 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 hello. Okay, so uh, you can perhaps hear the uh, what's coming back from uh, from my FT817, and uh, hopefully you can see here the frequency. This is about 433 uh, point. Well, 150, it actually says 149.25 here. Thanks very much for watching the video, and I'll let you know of any further progress you make on the project. Uh, thank you for watching.